What's up gamers, Red Dragon here, and we are talking virtual reality. Do you think virtual reality is the future? I wanted to do a video kind of going over the pros and cons of virtual reality. You know, we've heard a lot of things about the Oculus Rift, and uh, Sony is getting ready to unveil their own virtual reality headset. And then that's got a lot of people excited because we, we want to see what it is that they've come up with. Because so far we've been hearing behind the scenes that it's very similar to the Oculus Rift. Uh, some people have said that it uses the PlayStation camera to track your head movement. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's very similar and gives you the same interaction and experience that the Oculus Rift does. So, virtual reality has been the talk as far as a lot of people say that this is the future of gaming. So, let's dive down into the pros and cons of virtual reality. So, the first thing is, let's start with the pros. The one thing you hear most about virtual reality is how immersive it is. It, it, whenever you play a game or whenever you watch TV or go to the theater or anything, you're taken away from that experience like you're just watching it play out on a screen but if you could remove all the other surrounding movements around the screen and you could have the screen only in your focus and only see that a lot of people say that brings you into that world and it makes the experience feel very real you'll see people who are trying out a game or watching a, a video or something uh, using the Oculus Rift and they'll be reaching out trying to grab things or trying to grab a rail or, or something of that nature so your mind and your eyes start to believe that you really are in this world so it's an experience that you can't get from watching TV Another advantage of this immersive world is the screens you're looking at, you know, are huge. And they say some of the games are built to scale. Uh, one person, I believe, was from Kotaku. He said he was playing a shooter, and he actually did better than he normally does because the heads of people were a lot bigger than what it would be if you were looking at a TV screen from several feet away. So he was able to get a lot more headshots uh, by playing a game using virtual reality. I was listening to one guy give his experience and he was saying that there was one game that was built to scale where you walk into a room and you look up and it feels just like everything is right there. And then they've got a demo out where there's a roller coaster where you're up in the air and you can look down over the rails uh, to see down below you and they said it really does give you a feeling like you really are that high up in the air. So uh, th this gives a very different experience than what you're used to. Now, one of the things that I have mentioned in the past that I was afraid of, because I told you I, I wear glasses, I do have contacts, but like I'm not going to go through a whole lot of trouble just to play a game. You know, I'm not going to go put in contacts just to play a game. But uh, they do say that you can use, at least with the Rift, you can use your glasses. Now, we don't know how Sony's is going to work, but hopefully uh, that would still allow that to allow as many people to enjoy it as possible. And then the other thing I want to mention about this technology that I've also kind of suggested with the Kinect is it's not just built for games. You know, the Kinect, uh, a lot of different companies and agencies and universities are using the Kinect technology to do all sorts of things in the medical field and in defense and all, all sorts of things. The same can be done with virtual reality, and this is why this technology needs to go forward uh, because you could easily you know place something like this or place somebody in control of say a robot that could go into a situation like a bomb squad or something um, that can control things but have an experience as if they were really there and they'll be able to perform their job probably to a higher standard um, so this goes well beyond just games and it also goes over to movies and in fact, I was just uh, watching a trailer this morning. I'll leave a link down in the description box. It was really cool. They've just filmed the first 3D, 360 degree movie that is built for virtual reality. And they've actually got a trailer. And of course, it's not the full experience, but you can watch it on your computer. And, and if you blow it up to full screen, uh, you can use the mouse and actually look around the screen to get a sort of experience as to what that would be like to be able to be in this world and to be able to look anywhere where motion is actually taking place uh, and feel like you're actually really there. But with all these pros... 
there are some cons, and in fact, there's a, possibly a lot of cons, and it's kind of like a medicine, you know, you, you take medicine and it could have good effects, but it could also have a lot of side effects. And so, let's get into some of the bad side effects of virtual reality. So, one of the biggest complaints that the technology gets is people get motion sickness. And a lot of people say they feel very nauseous, a lot of times pretty soon. Now, this doesn't affect every single person. It affects different people differently, of course. Some people can get used to it. Some people don't want to get used to it. The more people that I read about, it seemed like the majority of the people seemed to say that they had to do this in spurts, like they had to play the games in spurts. It, this wasn't a technology where you could sit down and play for hours and hours upon a time and wake up and, and feel pretty good, or I guess get up and feel pretty good. Uh, some people have uh, complained of headaches. Uh, some say neck strain, which they say with the Rift that it is very lightweight. Uh, but of course, anything that is on your head uh, after a long period of time is is definitely going to take its toll and you're going to feel it if it's something that you're definitely not used to. So that could be a problem uh, for some people as well. One of the biggest things, though, is that uh, a lot of people think that if you get this virtual reality, that you'll be able to just jump in and play any game you want to uh, and, and be able to look around and use this. And uh, I was reading some reports today where they said this simply just isn't the case. They said some games can be minorly tweaked to work with it. But they say if you want to get a real good experience with this technology, you really need to have a game built from the ground up to support this or have a game highly modified in order to support this 3D virtual technology. And going back to sort of the motion sickness uh, discussion, a lot of developers say you really need slower based games. They say uh, playing like a shooter or a fast paced game on this, those types of games are really what tends to bring on motion sickness and they say they just don't work near as well as more slower paced games. I know I talked about a first person shooter early on, but they said those really aren't the ideal games to play. They said even games like horror games, they said are going to have to be thought differently a little a bit about whenever you are developing a game specifically uh, for virtual reality. And like I mentioned before, you're probably not going to be able to sit down and play with this for very long periods at a time. Now I know with the Rift, some people have even uh, complained about uh, fog on the lens and having to clean them a good bit and even sweat. Now the, the Sony device, we don't know how that's going to work or if there's going to be fans or anything else like that. You know, uh, in the future, whenever all this stuff comes out and people start upgrading it and tweaking it and things like that, you know, that something like a fan might actually be pretty cool to simulate wind blowing on you too. Um, so that might be something that in the future they could they could fix pretty easy uh, with something like that. Uh, and then finally, uh, one of the, the final things as far as the cons go is that they say the games need to be high resolution and 60 frames per second, and it needs to react immediately. They said if there's any lag whatsoever in you turning and looking and what you see in the game, then they said that is definitely going to cause problems and headaches and all other sorts of issues. And so in order to do that, the device is going to have to be powerful, and then that leads us to the final statement, which is, how much is it going to cost? And I think that's going to be the biggest determining factor with all this. Uh, and especially if you have to have games that are specifically built uh, for this or whatever else, uh, it has to be cost effective if it's going to be mass purchased by the consumers. Uh, and this, I don't know if it's going to be cost effective. Uh, that's something we're going to have to wait to find out to see how much the parts cost. And uh, Oculus has already said their goal is to make it where it's very affordable for everybody. Uh, but, you know, how much is affordable to everybody? Are you willing to pay $300 for a virtual reality headset? Would you pay $200? Would you pay $100? How much would you be willing to pay? You know, I'd certainly love to try it out. Uh, I, I, I will try it out eventually, hopefully one day, pretty soon. Um, but I'm not sure that it's something that I'm considering buying 
at least not at first. And I think I want to hold out and hear what others have to say once it hits the market. Uh, wait a couple of months, let the new wear off, and see where it stands, see where the games, uh, what the games look like, and everything else like that. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that I think virtual reality is an important field, and I hope the tech succeeds. I hope that both of these devices uh, take off well and that there are some great games. Um, I think there's a number of areas that are going to be important for the future when it comes to technology, and VR is certainly one of them. If I had the money to, to go blow and splurge and throw out for the device that uh, I could sit down and play in short bursts for fun, then I would probably pick it up. But at this point in my life, I've got to pick and choose my luxuries uh, for the time being. And uh, one day, whenever they've sorted out all the kinks and it's highly affordable and has lots of good games that are must-plays, then I might jump on board. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to just grab the popcorn, sit back, and watch it unfold. But I want to know, where do you stand? Are you going to be one of the first in line to pick up a virtual reality headset, whether it's Sony or Rift or something else? Or will you be waiting on the sidelines, watching it play out? with me. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. If you're new here, be sure you subscribe and drop a like on your way out. I appreciate it. It helps me out a ton and definitely makes me want to put out more videos. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.